Okay, let's try that again, this time with more gusto. <laughs> yeah, so, um, as, as I was saying before, like, we didn't really go too much into it, but Daybreak, pretty good map for macro, and uh, you rarely see sort of cheeses right at the start of a game, so not really expecting that out of either of these players, both players, uh, Pretty good players in their own right, and I'm really interested to see how uh, Dominator decides to play this. But down at the bottom left-hand side, as our orange Zerg player, it is Freeze Fenner. And his opponent in the top right, as the red Protoss player playing for TCP, it is Dominator. Fenner with the, uh, the Stefano style, good luck, have fun. Luckily, this is not Pro League, so he's not going to get a penalty for saying good luck, have fun. Well, I'm interested. What do you guys think of that? It's, it was a really uh, it was a really weird sort of situation. Like, I, I, as, a, I as a person who's been watching uh, Root War for quite a long time, knew that that was the case, but a lot of people sort of reacted and were like, wow, you get, a, you get a penalty or even a ban for, you know, talking your chat? That's crazy. That's crazy. Times in the past where, you know, talking, you get a player like Boxer who's got, you know, like 70 billion APM and that dude can, like, chat, have a, have a full-on conversation, write out, like, a thousand-word essay and also, um, you know, play the game at the same time. So, you know, and, and it kind of gets distracting. Not only does it get distracting for players sometimes, but it also for the casters. If you've got chat const constantly popping up in, in the middle of your game, it can be quite annoying to deal with. Um, I know, like, when I, generally when I'm casting, so we'll probably see for most of these games tonight, um, I don't really like having observers because generally observers tend to talk about the game. It gets kind of frustrating to deal with. So, um, you know, that's, that's something to consider. But, um, yeah, oh yeah, definitely, very, that's, that's a good point, Claymore's, um, with, you know, giving, giving the foreigners a chance, I think, I think, in the case of Stefano, you have this extremely rare situation, where it's like one of the first times in, well, let's not count the previous games EGTL had, but one of the first times a foreigner gets to play in Pro League, and, you know, while technically speaking, you really should know the rules, then, you know, Whatever, just give him a break the first time. If he does it again, then you can ban him. Either way, um, let's uh, see what these players are up to. Of course, Dominator has actually gone for a forge first. He's going to put that Nexus down in around about 50 minerals. He has actually, oh, in fact, he's blocked off his opponent for the time being. He's going to cancel that, get the minerals back, and start that Nexus up. Did, unfortunately, was not able to uh, block off the third base, uh, well, you know, the first uh, bonus hatchery that Fenner has gone for. Fenner needing to uh, do a bit of extractor cancelling to get his um, his numbers up with his drones. Of course, he's sitting at a current total of 15, nothing too fancy, uh, but it's all pretty standard right now. The first two links pop out. They're going to try and come across and uh, get rid of this scouting probe. The probe, of course, having a quick look. You want to have a look and see. Has the Zerg taken these gas? Is he is he mining from those gas or is he stopped mining? How much gas was taken out? All these kinds of things you do need to consider when you are scouting out when it's uh, sort of this very early period of the game. It looks like the probe will escape for the for uh, for the moment and, in fact, will probably get home. I mean, there is a cannon now built up by Dominator. He's got a very interesting wall. Uh, going to finish off this wall. With that uh, cybernetic score, probably going to go around about there. That's my best attempt at a square, guys. Hope that hope that works for you. But uh, the probe returns home, and of course that link will see. Whoops, there you go. I was going to say. All right, so he is going to put it just across to the side here. I'm a little bit worried about this corner. Perhaps that may be uh, possible to attack that just sort of right about there. But um, I, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Little zero, one one little zealot's going to pop out, and he should be happy enough to defend against that. And as we can see, everything pretty standard. So uh, we'll keep an eye on what Dominator is up to with his gases. Of course, that's one of the big common things you want to have a look at when uh, seeing what a Protoss is going to get up to. Has he taken gases one and two? Has he taken three and four very quickly? You know, these, all these kinds of things very important to keep in mind. Of course, uh, you know we sort of mentioned it just before with uh, has the Zerg done a good job with the, with hiding their gas or or uh, have, has it been spotted and you know are we able to determine what they're after? But a Protoss, of course, is also very reliable on what they're going to go for. If you see this gas come up at a roundabout, you know, sort of um, sort of this time. In fact, double gases at a roundabout this time going to signal quite a heavy early tech, and it looks like a Twilight Council is going up for a Dominator, so it, he may be going, there's a couple of options, I, 
You can grab a couple of DTs off this particular uh, count of gas, but I don't know. It sort of depends uh, what he wants to commit to right here. Obviously, we'll we'll uh, see what he's getting up to in just a moment. But it looks like a zealot's just going to come across on the third base, confirming what's going on here. Wants to see how many of those drones are there. We get a little bit of lag, unfortunately. The queen will fend him off and uh, send that guy packing, so he's going to have to pack up his side blades and head back home. There is a, uh, a probe coming across, so I'm thinking we may actually get DTs. Yep, there it is. Alright, so it is going to be a DT-based opening here from Dominator. He does pick up the third gas and will be utilizing that. Of course, Fennec can see the third gas here at the natural. Can also see that there is no fourth until around about now. And he'll, uh, you know, he'll be keeping in mind what, you know, what's going on here. We've got a Roach Warren on the way to obviously protect against any possible early sorts of attacks. Of course, very common ways to attack a Zerg at this point are uh, to grab, uh, you know, around about three to four gates, perhaps even a Warp Prism as well. Send it across, try and harass this third base. Or sometimes if you're a little bit more daring, jump inside the main with some sentries, force field out the, uh, force field out this sort of position here. And then, you know, you can just go to town on the drones that are in there. But... Obviously, it's not going to be anything like that from Dominator at the moment. He's a man after my own heart. I do love a bit of DT action, and he's got a proxy pylon up here, ready to rumble, and we'll see how well he goes. Of course, a lot of uh, a lot of people will sort of... You look at DTs, and, and when they come out, and you think, well, you know, the DTs didn't kill 93 drones. They're effectively wasted. Not necessarily. If you can, uh, if you can perhaps get a few drone kills, if especially if you can kill off a hatchery, something like this, and then keep the, the DTs alive, that still puts you in a really nice position because you've got the map control with these DTs. They can head across to the Zelnaga watchtowers, and as we can see, it looks like Dominator is going to go for a, uh, a triple pronged attack here. One DT inside the third, going to go to town. May need to start targeting those drones soon because the queen will come along and actually. Uh, draw the aggro of that uh, of the DT, but now it looks like we've got uh, one DT inside the nat. Where is where is the other one? He did get inside the main, so he's going to hack apart those drones for the moment. He's got to wow! He's just getting all sorts of kills here right now. There is a uh, where is the yep? Overseer is finally coming in for Fenner. Beautiful positioning on that one DT, and uh, the DT at the third is still going. Um, but uh, doing a really good job, and it looks like, Jesus, how many kills? 25 kills. Fenner just unfortunately not reacting the best in the best timing there. But uh, guys, this is like the worst timing ever. I gotta get the front door. I gotta put it on Dominator's cam so you can keep an eye on it. I'll just be back in half a second. Hang on. I am here in the shadows. We're back. Uh, what did we see on Dominator Cam? We saw him getting up to plus two weapons is on the way. And he's got uh, quite a lot of units coming out. No attempt to at the third base. So I'm thinking he's just going to get his tech rolling. Uh, has, uh, wow, five, eight gates in total, including the one down at the natural here. So a lot of damage has been done. And as we can see, Venom still trying to recover with his economy. He's back up to 68 drones. He did, he, you know, has, has recovered quite well. But this is the thing about these kinds of DT attacks is that they force you back into uh, a little bit of a time warp because you've gone back in time. You've got to re-drone up at some of these positions here. It means your tech's a little bit slower. And, uh, you know, depending on what the Protoss does next, you need to be very careful with uh, how you react. So it looks like uh, Fennin's going to head out with quite a lot of Zerglings. Wants to try and get back some of the map control. Uh, has one of the towers at least. It has quite a lot of vision with all of these creep tumors now spreading out across the map. Still, does he... has he actually... Okay, yeah, he has seen that. I was going to say, has he seen that pylon? Because it's around about time for him to get rid of that. But does come across these uh, links. Keep in mind, do not have any upgrades just as of yet. But the roaches do. The roaches have got plus one on their weapons. And it looks like Fenner is preparing for this uh, possible attack that will come along. Going to have a lot of gateway units here. There is going to be a Colossus or two. One is already done. There is a second one on the way. Extended the Lance, not done. So there is going to be a pretty big attack. Where is the proxy pilot? Alright, he's getting another one up now. But uh, Fenner is 
is he going to be ready for this? He's got uh, a whole bunch of roaches that have popped out, and of course a couple of corruptors are also on the way. A lot of lings on the ground. This is going to be very dependent on good force fields here from Dominator. Um, another way you can approach this secondary attack if you're going for DTs to open up is to get a, a few Archons out because the Archons can help deal with these guys on the ground and of course um, they can do a really good job in uh, sort of opening up the lines for your opponent. So we're just going to have a pause for a moment while we wait for Dom. Post in the chat what you think is going to happen after the pause obviously. I think that Dominator is going to do a reasonably good push, but with all of those Corruptors coming out with plus two, uh, almost done as well, and Roach Speed also done, um, you know, I think that Fenna should be okay. This is the problem with attacking with Colossus after a DT-based push, in my opinion, at least, is that it hits a little bit slower. It is, it is still quite powerful, but the problem is it's a little bit slower. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. There are those Corruptors, of course, very, very useful in this engagement. Is going to get rid of one of those Overseers. Very nice, uh, nicely done by Fennet to have that Overseer prepared just in case his opponent was bringing along more DTs. But the lines are drawn. We've got the Roaches. We've got some Hydras even being thrown into the mix here. And uh, here we go. It looks like Fennet is just going to try and take advantage of his opponent while he's on the creep. Looks like the, uh, the Lynx are actually getting caught out quite a bit there. Just losing some of those units for no real reason at all. The Double Colossus now coming along with Without extended thermal lands, keep in mind they are not going to be able to do damage from afar. So he's now going to try and push through. Oh my god, if... Don't tell me, Fenna, do not get trapped down the bottom of the ramp. That would not be the greatest maneuver. I think he's actually just trying to wait for his opponent to move into position because now there are roaches and lings on both sides. And here they come into Sandwich. And the meat is made out of Dominator. He is going to be in uh, Sandwich Town right now. Does actually pull back most of his units. Get some beautiful force fields on the ramp as well. Zealous at the front, but the problem is that the Colossus are now gone. And those guys, without the extra damage they provide, Fenna is just going to absolutely tear apart most of this. Keep in mind, Dominator has no blink. He has plus two, which is a fantastic set of upgrades on all of these Stalkers. But with no blink, the Roaches should be able to just go to town on all of these Stalkers. Corruption even goes down. But, uh, wow, actually, where is my uh, mouse going? All right. Nicely done there by uh, Dominator. You still push back the initial forces. 40 lings on the way, but I still think Fen is not going to be uh, not going to be sort of uh, you know he's not going to back down from this. He's going to take this argument to his opponents, some zealots and stalkers now warping it. You know, I, I would really love to see some DT thrown in here for some archons. I, I mean, you know, he's sort of he's sort of uh, spent quite a lot of his gas on those colossus, and that's obviously you know one thing that we were talking about with this particular type of build. And now he's finally got a, a uh, an observer out here to clean up some of that creep. But Fenner back at home, sitting on 69 drones. He's got you know his upgrades are pretty much where he wants them right now. That that plus two is done. The DTs have finally come in here. A little bit. Uh, a little bit slow into the mix there, unfortunately, for Dominator. But these guys, are, are they actually going to get inside undetected? There is n Oh, okay, there is some detection there. There is a... Uh, a I think there's a spore crawler there. But Hydra Roach Ling is the uh, the current state of the game for Fenner right now. He's gone for a little bit more old-school style. Welcome back to 2010, guys. Uh, because this is the, you know, this is what it looks like right now. It's quite interesting to see this. But as we can see, Dominator... If you if you know, your DTs, despite doing a fantastic amount of damage, if they uh, if the secondary push does not do any good damage and you aren't able to take a third, you're still in quite a lot of trouble as a Protoss player. And now Fenner sweeping across the right, gonna make sure that that third base is denied. Meanwhile, the Hydras and Roaches up the front, gonna try and just push up that ramp. Unfortunately, the force field just slightly off. There is a conga line of Hydras now pushing through. It looks like Fenner is uh, going to have his way with the majority of these units, but of course those upgrades. The, the plus two on Dominator's units now coming back and uh, really helping out there. The Hydras, of course, those very, very slow units now uh, unable to retreat too quickly. But looks like uh, with an additional Colossus, Dominator is going to come back. He, he said, you know what? I'm not done either. You were totally wrong about calling me dead. And uh, Fenner. He's going to need to just resupply and make sure everything is back up and running. Meanwhile, Proxy Pylon has uh, brought in some zealots up to the top left-hand side of the map. They're going to go to town. 
on that hatchery while a DT heads down inside the third. Luckily for Fenner, beautifully positioned with the uh, with the Overseer here, ready to rumble, and of course the Spine Crawler is ready to poke anyone's eye out. So, situation currently leaves us with uh, 46 probes at the moment for Dominator. He still has no third base, pretty much no chance of getting a third base either, and uh, he's going to try and push in through this sudden portion of the map down through the south corridor. Going to link up with the rest of these zealots here as well. Blink is on the way. A couple of stalkers and another colossus are also being built. This is going to be perhaps the final push of Dominator. It, you know, this is a very strong build, a uh, very strong composition here with a lot of zealots to deal with those zerglings on the ground. Of course, the colossus as well. Lots of stalkers. And if that blink, if he can just hold off while that blink kicks in, I think we may see him do a really good job here. But Venner pushes up, just says, you know what, in your face, buddy. One, two on those upgrades. Corrupt is just taking down the last remaining Colossus. There is another one on the way, but it's a little bit far behind. And we'll see if Dominator, the blink, is just about to kick in right now. Changelings at the back going to uh, actually block off some of those stalkers from the retreating. I would love to see like a wall of changelings there. That would have been awesome. But uh, I think that is going to be the end of Dominator. He's down to 82 supply, despite the fantastic amount of damage that he did right at the start of the game uh, with those DTs. I think we saw how many was it? 34 workers have been killed by Dominator in this game. But uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. Fenner with the Hydra Roach composition, uh, a very, uh, as we said, a very old school kind of uh, way to play PvZ, but you know what, it worked, it's a great way to deal with very early pressure, especially when it's extremely heavily gateway based, and uh, now with the Cyber going down, Overseer's at the front taking some of that damage from the cannon, interestingly enough, and uh, it looks like that is going to be it. Dominator doing a great job with his, uh, with his Stalkers, trying to uh, just utilize them as best as he can, but unfortunately the end is nigh. The gateway has gone down. Forge is next on the menu for all of those Origins and Zerglings, and a GG comes out from Dominator.